Hello, everyone. It's September 21st. Uh, I'm Phil Jacobus with Healthcare Business News. Thanks very much for joining me. Uh, today, I'm going to share a pre recorded interview that was recorded on September 11th, a sad day in New York. But it's an interesting interview with Peter McGregor. Uh, Peter's with B. Braun Medical, and he talks about uh, regional anesthesia. Uh, it's so, perhaps something that's used in Europe, but not in the United States. And, and I found it interesting, and I think you will as well. But before we talk about regional anesthesia, before we go to that pre-recorded interview, let's take a look at some news that's in today's Healthcare Business News Online. Uh, one interesting story you see is how Medicare patients pay in orders of magnitude less for the same procedure than patients covered by insurance. I'm sure this is something that we're all familiar with. This story really shines a light on it. And, you know, I, I encourage you to read it. Another uh, interesting, worrisome story is how oncologists are facing huge backlogs and, frankly speaking, being burned out or experiencing burnout because they have to work so hard. Uh, and, you know, it's particularly acute problem because experiencing all of your oncological treatments is necessary for life saving. So it's, it's pressure in two different directions. Anyway, please take a look at these stories and other stories. We cover all of the hot topics in today's news, uh, the most important topics online every day. And I encourage you to sign up for our free news. It only takes a minute and it's free. So hello, and we're very lucky to have with us today, Mr. Peter McGregor, who is with B. Braun Medical. Today, he's uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, are, you, are you, Peter, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Phil, Phil for inviting me. Are you, to be are, are you in the office or are you working from home? No, everybody's working from home, as you can see in the, in the background here. I'm kind of in my, my library, so yeah, yes, working you're, from home. You, clearly, you're a well-read guy. So, uh, you know, most people know B. Braun. It's a sort of a household name, but just or just to give us some perspective, tell us just a little bit about B. Braun. Sure. So B. Braun Medical is, is um, you know, a leader in infusion therapy and, and pain management. You know, it it uh, develops and manufactures and markets medical devices and, and other services to, to healthcare. Uh, B. Braun Medical is really a, a, um, one of many companies within the U.S. Uh, there's a group of B. Braun companies, uh, the companies that extend throughout the world. Um, you know, B. Braun worldwide has over 61,000 employees and multiple you know, sites all over the world. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a big organization. B. Braun Medical is the, is the U.S. piece of that, yes. So uh, today we're going to talk about regional anesthesia because B. Braun is introducing this uh, new product that's not new in the world, but new in the United States. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I, I wasn't familiar with regional anesthesia before we met, but could you tell me, tell us just what that is and how you define it? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the way I like to think about it, you think you're having a, a surgery for so the surgical procedure, you, know, you may have that done by uh, anesthesia as a gas anesthesia. We're used to seeing it on TV that, you know, we have a mask, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, you know, it, there's gas that's given to you and, uh, you know, put you to sleep, so to speak. Regional anesthesia is more of an anesthesia process where, you know, it's kind of the numbing. Um, you get the same effect, uh, but it also has a pain management aspect to it and that regional anesthesia can also manage your pain you know post-surgical so it's different than than general anesthesia uh, and regional anesthesia so I mean one way to think about regional anesthesia is just um, if you're having your tooth uh, you know cavity addressed or you know being removed you know they give you some Novocaine and you know that kind of numbs the area there's small nerve fibers there um, that's being numbed Regional anesthesia, you know, there's, there's 
there's large nerves, right, that come down your spinal cord and, and go out. And what you try to do is, is uh, you know, put a needle or something next to the nerve and, and drip some anesthetic in there uh, so that it blocks the pain coming up that nerve. So it can be very localized. Uh. I see. Uh, you know, intuitively, I have an idea that that's better for the patient, but could you elaborate on that? <clears throat> Yeah, so there are advantages to, to regional anesthesia over general anesthesia. Uh, one I mentioned, you know, right off the bat is, you know, the pain management afterwards. Uh, with general anesthesia, you know, post-surgical, there's usually a lot of pain and, and there can be the need for opioids and that leads somewhat to the opioid crisis. I think the, the medical community has done a very good job recently in managing the number of pain pills and scripts that they give to uh, patients nowadays, but regional anesthesia, you, you don't necessarily need to have those opioids. Uh, you can manage it with, you know, a catheter or a tube placed next to the nerve and continue to put in the anesthetic. Like, likewise, with, with uh, you know, general anesthesia, you can run into, you know, side effects of the gas afterwards. I mean, if you've ever been through a surgical procedure with gas, and a lot of, a lot of times, you know, 40% or more of the times you have nausea or vomiting effect with that. And you have to spend time in the, in the recovery room or the, the PACU as they call it. Um, and uh, you know, it takes additional time. Uh, and, and with regional anesthesia, so you tend to have a faster recovery. So uh, we'll talk about the product is on vision. We'll talk about that in just a minute, but do I understand that you can, you, the needle <clears throat> inserted near the nerve and it can be left in place so that uh, as the patient is recuperating, you can drip anesthesia in. Is, did I follow that? Yeah, so there's, there's two different ways to do it, Some, something like that, yeah. So the key is that you want to get the anesthetic right next to the nerve, and, and how do you do that? And you know, if I could take a minute, you know, talk maybe a little bit about the evolution of regional anesthesia, because it's not as popular as general anesthesia is. It, it's gaining popularity. Uh, and the evolution is, is somebody, if, if you think about when you hit your uh, nerve on your funny bone uh, and, you know, they feel that pain, that's called a paresthesia. And in the early days of regional anesthesia, they get near the nerve, that's what they would do. They would kind of poke the needle uh, near the nerve and wait till you get a paresthesia. And that's not too comfortable to the, for the patient, right? So that's not a really good practice. So not a lot of people did it. Uh, then it moved into, uh, you know, uh, stimulation was the next step in the evolution. And with uh, stimulation, uh, to kind of think about when you, uh, you know, do a reflex, you know, bend your knee over and hit it with a hammer, you know, you stimulate the nerve there by giving it kind of electrical shock. So what you can do is you can, you can put electricity, if you will, uh, right at the tip of the needle and stimulate the nerve. And as you get near the nerve with the amount of current that you're putting there, you can tell how close you're getting near the nerve. And as well as when you do the stimulation, you get a twitch. Uh, you'll see a motor response um, from that nerve wherever you're targeting. Um, so if you're targeting, let's say in your, your forearm, you may get a twitch in, in a finger. Um, so you can, you can better use stimulation to identify where the tip of the needle is. And nowadays with ultrasound, um, <clears throat> what has happened is, you know, even stimulation, you're still blind. You didn't know what structures the needle was going through. With ultrasound, it allowed you to see the structures now of where that needle is going. Um, but to use ultrasound and see the needle, you need to have the, the beam of the ultrasound, which can be very thin, like as thin as a piece of paper, aligned with the needle to be able to see it. Um, so that, that's a technical challenge. That's, that's a little bit of a skill. And that's where we are today. Um, and, and we're bringing some new technology in. But with ultrasound and stimulation combination, uh, uh, regional anesthesia has gained greatly in profit and uh, popularity. I see. And I think B. Braun partnered, you told me, with Philips. Is that correct? To, for that correct. One? So, so the new technology that uh, we're bringing is a, a needle called OnVision. And uh, OnVision is a collaboration, a strategic alliance that we've had for well over five years now with Philips Healthcare. And the goal was to really make the needle smarter. So make the needle so that it, it connects directly to the ultrasound machine. 
and provides information to the ultrasound machine. Uh, what actually happens here is that there's a, a tiny little sensor placed on the tip of the needle. And that tip of the, uh, that, that sensor communicates directly with the ultrasound transducer, the probe of the ultrasound. And, and artificially displays on the screen, on the ultrasound image, a circle that tells you where the tip of the needle is. And the tip of the, that circle um, tells you where the tip of the needle is, whether you're in plane or in the beam of the ultrasound or out of plane you still know where the tip of the needle is. And that's what's extremely important. Again, to answer your question you know, early on is, your goal is to put the tip of the needle next to the nerve. You don't wanna be in the nerve, you wanna be next to the nerve, and you don't wanna hit an artery, you don't wanna hit a vein, you don't wanna hit any other structure on your way to getting to that nerve. So once you're near the nerve, then you would place some anesthetic. And then you would remo remove the needle. You would remove the needle at that point. Where I was saying earlier that you know you could have a continuous flow of anesthetic, you would have to put a catheter or a tube through that needle to be able to do that. I see. Uh, is the I'm sorry to ask this question, but is the needle painful going in? If it's big enough for a catheter to fit through, <clears throat> the needles that are big enough for a catheter are, are a little bit larger. Um, so yeah, there's usually a little bit of numbing medicine that we we'll use. The the single needles, which is the only needle we have today, to be clear, is just a, what they call the single shot. We're able to put the needle in and then uh, put some anesthetic. There's not one, not an on-vision needle with a catheter yet. Uh, but that needle is like, you know, 20, 22 gauge. So what's that, a, a third of an inch? It, you know, they're, they're pretty small. Is there a, a, a COVID uh, element to this? Uh, uh... Yeah, so, so interesting, not with, with COVID, as I was describing earlier, with, you know, a lot of surgical procedures are done with gas. So that means you have to be near the mouth or you're placing an endotracheal tube, something in the trachea. Um, <clears throat> with regional anesthesia, you don't need to be near the mouth. I mean, you're going to be near the nerves. So you can avoid any of the airborne particles uh, from COVID, you know, spreading to patients or spreading to the healthcare workers. Um, so there is a movement to move away from the gas or general anesthesia towards regional because you can avoid the aerialization of the airborne particles of COVID. Now, is this uh, technique used through all over the body or just for uh, nerves that <clears throat> originate? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That's a great question because... <clears throat> As your understanding is, yeah, it's easier to get at the peripheral, you know, whether it be your arms or legs, get at those nerves and to block those nerves. So that's where it really started. But now they're learning that, again, with the benefits of regional anesthesia, how can I block nor nerves in the abdomen or elsewhere? And there's ways to do that. And <clears throat> they're learning how to do that today. Um, there, there, there are blocks that are called, <clears throat> excuse me, tap blocks or field blocks. You know, Transabdominal plan. I'm getting a little technical. Um, that that yes, you can block the abdominal area and in other areas. Generally, not above really the chest, but yeah. I see. Uh, what about cost? So you know, interesting enough that uh, general anesthesia and regional anesthesia. You know, probably regional anesthesia is maybe a little bit more costly in general, only because uh, it maybe takes a little bit more time to set up where you save is on the back end, like I was saying earlier, that you can get patients uh, out of the PACU earlier, you can get them out of the um, hospital earlier, uh, length of stay has been shortened, there's lower readmission rates. Um, so, so the cost of regional anesthesia pays off on the back end. Uh, the cost of needle, yeah, it's going to be a little more expensive with, with the sensor, but it's not, you know, double, triple the time, you know, we, we want to, uh, you know, benefit patients. Is the needle used one time only? Yes, correct. It's, it's a single use disposable needles. Yeah, almost all needles are today, yes. Okay. Um, so I have to ask, just out of curiosity, one vision it's called, right? On vision. And, uh, sorry? On, on, vi on vision, yeah. On vision. And it was introduced, so it's five <laughs> years in the making, and it was introduced in Europe ahead of us. Yeah, the, the regulatory requirements of the U.S. are a little bit more challenging than, than outside the U.S., so it was initially launched uh, a, little over, a little less than a year ago, so it's probably been commercial use in Europe for about nine months. 
I see. And yeah. now it's being introduced in the U.S. Yeah, so we just recently got approval and made a, a press announcement uh, just to, uh, on August 25th that we have that approval. Um, now we're moving to commercialization. Uh, we would expect to have commercialization of the product uh, by next month, uh, mid to late uh, October. Uh, and then we'll get the first uses in the United States market. There's been uses outside the United States and there's been, you know, some data coming out of, out of uh, uh, the European market that, you know, it, it shows that placing using this needle reduces your procedural time. Uh, you know, this, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, using ultrasound and stimulation takes some skill. It can reduce the learning curve. Um, so uh, as we see the importance of regional anesthesia, you know, particularly in COVID and reducing opioids, uh, um, we expect that to continue to grow and, and uh, on Vision we hope we'll try to make things a little bit easier for for uh, anesthesiologists to use it. I'm sure that uh, there's a special custom probe for this purpose, is that correct? So yeah, that's, a, that's another great point. Yeah, this, this is a dedicated system between the Philips B. Braun ultrasound machine and the Philips B. Braun needle. So the OnVision needle only works with the platform of the ultrasound machine, which is called Experius by, it's and both Experience and the Needle on Vision are co-branded, Bebron and Philips. I see, and there, and so the, there is no you. The ultrasound machine is used exclusively for this purpose. Correct. You have to, you have to have the Bebron Philips Experience ultrasound machine to be compatible with the needle. I see. And and another point of that is that's a, a another great point is it's really a plug and play, ready to use needle. There's nothing special you have to do if you have it hooked up to uh, the Xperia's ultrasound machine. Um, so your workflow as a, as a physician is the same as it was before. Uh, you just have to plug it in. So you're plugging, like I said before, you use a stimulation, you're plugging the needle into a stimulator. This time you're plugging it into both the stimulator and the ultrasound machine or the one cable. I see. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we got to visit with you early in the uh, development of the introduction in the United States. So I feel like I'm uh, scooping a story here. So thank You're you. You're on the cutting edge right now. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And I, I'm, I'm also not drinking any alcohol. <laughs> well, it is Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, Peter, uh, if I may call you Peter, it's a very Sorry, interesting technology. Yeah. Uh, I'm very happy that we got to speak and I want to thank you very much. And I hope you'll come back or maybe uh, send, you know, tell us more about this in the future. I, I'd love to follow up with you and see how we're doing. Yeah, it's fascinating technology. All right. Well, thank you very much and have a nice weekend.